It happened in an instant, on September 23, 1880, on a sunny afternoon on David Lang's farm, a few kilometers from Gallatin, Tennessee, USA. Fate wanted this mystery to take place in a pleasant environment. Lang's home was a large brick house and consisted of several parts, all overgrown with vines. In front was a large pasture, which the cattle had grazed neatly, but now it had turned brown from the long summer drought. That afternoon, the Lang's two children, eight-year-old George and eleven-year-old Sarah, played with a toy their father had brought from Nashville that morning, a wooden cart pulled by wooden horses. The children dragged the toy around the yard while their parents watched them. Mr. Lang is working towards the fence to look at his horses with which he was proud. He stood by the fence and looked at his large pocket watch when his wife called out to him, Come back quickly, David, I'd like you to drive me into town before the shops close. David waved his hand and said, I'll be here in a few minutes. But he never came back, because David Lang was only thirty seconds away from meeting fate, whatever it was, the children stopped playing because they saw a light two-wheeler approaching from a distance. Judge August Pack came and always brought them gifts. Mrs. Lang also saw the two-wheeler, and so did David, for he waved to the judge and started for the house. David Lang had not taken more than five or six steps, when he disappeared in full view of everyone present. Mrs. Lang screamed. The children were stunned. Everyone instinctively ran towards where Lang was last seen a few seconds ago. The judge and his son-in-law, who was in a two-wheeler, ran across the field at once. There was no bush or tree or hole to disturb the surface. Not a trace of what happened to David Lang. David Lang disappeared in front of his wife, two children and two people in a two-wheeler. Subsequent examinations of the witnesses showed that they all saw the same things at the same time and in the same place. The local surveyor inspected the terrain and stated that there are no underground cavities or holes and that the terrain is very solid. There was never a funeral or memorial service for Mr. Lang. His wife, who lived for many more years, lived in the hope that he, David Lang, would one day return. At last she allowed Judge Pack to rent the whole farm except for the pasture in front of the house. She left the pasture untouched while she was alive, as strange as the disappearance was, what two of Lang's children noticed one warm evening in April 1881, seven months after the event, is also as strange. The children noticed that in the place where their father was last seen, there was a circle of stunted yellow grass about five meters in diameter. One evening as they stood by that circle, eleven-year-old Sarah called out to her father, and to their surprise they heard his voice calling for help. Again and again. Growing fainter, until it fell silent, forever. 